I'm Kathy Piantagini, Deputy Director of Libraries here in Somerville. And with me today, I have Allison um, Mitchell, our children's librarian at the West Branch Library. Hi, Allison. Kathy. And Lily Sunbell Thomas, who works up at our main library. She's helping with adult programming and today, Reader's Advisory. And the three of us are here to talk about some books that we're recommending for the fall. So we have a little something for everybody, adults, teens, kids. Um, and let's just jump in and start with you, Lily. Sure. So I got a little overexcited this time, um, but I guess the first book I want to talk about is My Life with Bob. Have you guys heard about this? No. Um, it's really fun. So it's actually written by the New York Times um, book review editor, uh, Pamela Paul, and Bob is not her uncle, and it's not her dad or her cousin or her whoever. Um, Bob is her book of books, so it's really, it's cute. She has been keeping this book of books since high school, um, and she writes down every single book that she has read, and it's sort of a fun coming-of-age book. It reads almost like a blog, in that it's like very funny and casual, mm -hmm. um, but it sort of brings you through her high school experience and then all the way up to becoming the New York Times book review editor. That's really cool. Love yeah. it. Recommend it. Do you, um, did you happen to see like what some of the early her books are as a teenager? Did yeah. About? Um, so she goes to France and she doesn't, she goes to this like backwater um, town in France and she doesn't make any friends there but she reads a lot of books. Mm -hmm. um, but they, so I think it's in the, the 80s that she is in France. Trying to remember what she's reading. She, she's into literature. Okay, so it's probably like like so. Let's see, Madame Bovary or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. She does get into Brave New World, 1984, Clockwork Orange. Mm -hmm. She she tries to read everything. Um, so I'm sure you guys That's a great idea for love those. Those. Yeah. for everybody who likes to read. Dig. Just a really fun, fun read. Dig. Yep, dig it. Um, next up, the Essex Serpent. That has a nice cover. Yeah. Really nice cover. Oh. I forgot this at home and then I had to run home and get it because I loved the cover so yeah. much. Yeah. Um, so this is really fun. Well, actually, it's it's not as fun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, no, it's not as fun. It's like sort of gothic. Um, it is a Victorian era historical fiction about this woman, Cora, who is in a sort of abusive relationship and her husband passes away and she's sort of liberated. And she um, goes to Essex and she wants to find the Essex Serpent, which is a real um, occurrence that happened in Essex around that time. People thought there was this- Like a Loch Ness monster sort of exactly thing? Exactly okay. like that. Okay. Um, really happened. I was talking to Kevin in reference about oh. it and he said, well, I know of the Essex Serpent, but I didn't know of this book. You know, Kevin. <laughs> um, so, so she goes to find the Essex Serpent and she ends up befriending um, this priest and there's just a sort of really interesting uh, science versus religion versus mm. superstition thing with this sort of gothic overtone. Wow, very cool. Yeah, I liked it. It's, it's not like a really action-y mm -hmm. uh, book, but it, you can sort of seep into oh, its like interesting um, Gosh, beautiful. Sort of scene. Yeah, really beautiful book. Is this her first novel? I think it's her second <laughs> novel. Mm -hmm. But me. I hadn't read the first one. Wow. Great. So it's fun, yeah. Into it. Mm -hmm. Moving right along. I have to make some space down here. I know. I know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all right. Um, <coughs> my next one that I brought, I actually, it came out in 2016, but as the resident sort of fantasy geek, I felt like I had to make a plug for a fun fantasy novel. And it's mm -hmm. also probably a good crossover YA book um, okay. for, an, for an older teen. There's some mature content in it. Um, have either of you read this? Or no. no, what is it? It's called Uprooted by Naomi Novik, and it did win some awards. So it won, I have written down here, the Nebula Award, and it was one of the finalists for the Hugo Award. So it's sort of like a, a big deal. A big book um, mm -hmm. in fantasy. Um, and I just, I really liked it because I really like uh, sort of fairy tale retellings. Mm. So she, it's about this girl that lives in this small town, I think in like a fantastical Poland, um, because there's a lot of Polish fairy tale influence. And so they live in this little um, town, but there's this, of course, magical wooded area that's sort of evil and it's kept at bay by this magician who is called mm -hmm. the dragon. 
and but in a sort of payment for keeping the town safe, he takes a girl every 10 years to be his servant. So it's about one of the girls that is taken, um, but it's really interesting, really strong, strong female character. Mm -hmm. And it's also the kind of book that you kind of like lose a day or two when you read. You, yeah. just, you just have to just sit there and read it. That actually. It's really good. Utterly engrossing, yeah. Yeah, I really, do you like fantasy? I don't actually, but that, oh. um, well, I shouldn't say I don't, but it's not what I tend to gravitate towards. Yeah. But I have enjoyed um, some fantasy books, yeah. You, you might like this one. Yeah. Ursula Le Guin is on the back as having liked it. Gregory Maguire, who's a little bit played out right mm -hmm. now, but still a big name, also liked it. Cool. And I loved it. Cool. Great. Yeah. yeah. Super good. good stuff. Um, then I brought this Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, because everyone mm -hmm. is talking about mm -hmm. it right now. Um, everybody I see it in a library copy, which is cracking. <laughs> I had up. to buy my own copy because the, <laughs> the wait was really long. It happens. Um, I and got I, one of those actually. <laughs> right. I thought somebody that I know might want it. Like my dad is really into science. I don't know. That's great. Um, so, I tried really hard to read this book, <laughs> and it, you know, it's it's digestible. It's not that long. Well, yeah. You know, no, it's, not well, it's dense, maybe, or yeah, yeah. I just have never been a great student of science. Mm -hmm. I think, um, and he does a great job of making it digestible uh, for a person who is not a student of science, um, and I did enjoy it, but I sort of found myself getting a little glazed over. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, yeah, when yes, of course, it's a beautiful cover. Back. Yeah. Um, and it's it's super hot right now, like New York Times uh, bestseller list and all that. So hmm. that's worth giving a try, right? Yeah, yeah. I wanted to give it a try. Um, the Pluto Files, the rise and fall of America's favorite planet. It's <laughs> great. Rise and fall. Um, but yeah, I was I, I was in. They kind of read like essays. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was in bed reading it last night and and complaining about how I. Um, wasn't loving it. And my boyfriend reminded me about this book that we had both read, mm -hmm. uh, that we both loved, which is really similar. Uh, so it's Seven Brief Lessons on Physics by Carlo Rovelli. It was originally written in Italian. He's an Italian physicist. Mm -hmm. And um, where Neil deGrasse Tyson is like, is very American and very, like a little bit campy. He like tries to make it exciting mm -hmm. and maybe like a, um, oh, what's that guy? Um, Bill Nye or something? Yeah, in mm -hmm. almost a Bill Nye way. This guy is super po it's poetic. Mm -hmm. It's really beautifully written, and I found it stuck with me a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, um, when did that come out? This one came out, I was looking originally 2014, mm -hmm. but I think it was translated in 2016. Very slim. Beautiful. So, if cover. you were recommending, you might recommend this one over. You know, I honestly don't know. I think it really depends on your personality. Mm -hmm. I think maybe if you're a student of the humanities, this would be better for you. Um, but if you're somebody who's comfortable, more comfortable with science, maybe that one. Um, hmm. Both are good. Yeah. But this one, and this one's cover is just beautiful. Nice. So if you're looking for a quick read. So it, again, it's separate. It looks like. Yeah. Oh, it's seven lessons, right? Yeah. So this one sort of reads like your favorite professor who has mm. like really wonderful ways of talking about the universe that make you feel kind yeah. of warm and fuzzy. <laughs> I liked this one. So oh. maybe like Neil deGrasse Tyson's that professor you'd go like have a beer with or something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he might do like fun science experiments in class. Whereas this guy, you could just listen to him talk probably mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. So good. Good science books. Mm, nice. And both are really topical because we just had the eclipse. Exactly. Um, so they got me thinking about astrophysics, right? Um, the last book I brought to talk about is not a new book, and you probably have heard of it. Everybody has heard of this, Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, um, about a Nigerian woman who comes to the United States uh, pretty much to go to college. Um, but it's just so thought-provoking and interesting, um, and just I can't say enough good things about it. Um, but I brought it because 
we have a new book club at, well, it's sort of at the library. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, Cassie, one of our other librarians, and I are starting this book club, which is going to be at Aeronaut Brewery. And Americana is our first pick for it. So it's going to be, the first meeting will be uh, September 19th from 6 to 7 at Aeronaut Brewery. Tuesday or Thursday? It's a remember. Tuesday. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I we're getting a ton of interest on Facebook. Mm -hmm. We made a Facebook event, so if you haven't seen that, or if you just want to come and talk about this book because you love it so much, I invite both of you. It's a great first book. Yeah. Group yeah. That book group. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. And then in October, we're going to talk about a nonfiction book. So we're going to try to like mix it up a little bit. Yeah, I think it's going to be fun. Is that still to be determined? Right it now? has not been revealed, but it Whoa. has been determined. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to go to do the, do the big reveal here? We're not <laughs> like really sure how we want to do the reveal. Yeah. Um, but I think we That'll should wait. I think maybe I you need to yeah. come yep. to the event yep. to have the reveal. Fair enough. Awesome. But it will be nonfiction. I already cool. sent out a spoiler on Facebook. Oh, okay. Somebody asked, and I said, well, I can't tell you, but the hype might be all in my mind. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. That's very great. Yeah. So all exciting stuff. Lots of lots yeah, of fun definitely. things. Definitely. And wow. good fall reads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, so I only brought two today, and one of them. Uh, well, you know, it's funny now that I'm thinking about oh, good fall reads, but really I read it this summer, and um, <laughs> but we okay. So the the book that I'm going to talk about is The Whale, a love story by Mark Beauregard. And how I came upon it was I was starting to collect some books about the Berkshires because we're going there on vacation in about a week or Ooh, so. Where are you going? Um, we're staying in Pittsfield. Nice. But we are going because we're going to see the Who, um, the Who's Tommy, I guess, is Tanglewood is doing their okay. version of it. And Pete so Townsend is going to be there. Yeah. So that's what started the whole interest. And then we were able to get a week's, you know, find a place to stay and turn it into a vacation. Perfect. So while I was getting like travel guides and things to do, this book popped up and it is so amazing. I think I may have been telling you about yeah, it, Allison, yeah. but what it is, it's a love story between Nathaniel Hawthorne and Herman Melville. So <laughs> the time period is 1850s. The setting is the Berkshires. Um, and it starts by Melville coming to visit um, a lot of like literary, you know, the literary literary world out in the Berkshires at that okay. time. So he's um, there visiting his brother, um, and he travels with his wife, child, mother, and maybe his sister. They all came from Manhattan, and he meets um, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and they instantly there's sparks. Okay. And so it's about what happens after that initial meeting and this very intense kind of two-year period of time. Hmm. The other great thing I liked about it was the descriptions of the Berkshires at different times of the year. So like winter, when there's snowstorms, this idea of like one leaving their house to travel like four or six miles either by carriage or walking to go visit somebody and what the houses were like. and. Um, you know, this idea of like what family stayed at a house. So, you know, for Melville, when he bought a place um, out in the Berkshires to be closer to Hawthorne, this idea of like how they all had to get along in not a very large house. And it, it was just so insightful. Um, and a lot of it is actually based on um, fact, letters, journals, which that part was interesting too. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to talk about, and it's a, it's a relatively quick read, So, um, and the writing was very good. Very compelling. It was a page turner, for sure. Um, and then the other book I brought was, is Tom Parada's newest novel, Mrs. Fletcher. So this, to me, was the one that um, pretty much every day this summer, I was like, it's coming out at some point soon, and I can't <laughs> wait to get I it. I love that. And I could not wait to get it, so I also bought this copy. But, yep. um, it's been such a great read. I'm about mm, two thirds of the way in, and um, I found myself just a couple of nights ago skipping ahead really quickly because, like, <laughs> you know, that happens when you're reading yeah. and you're like, "Oh, I want to know what happens," <laughs> but I don't want like to read these five pages like right. super in depth. 
And then I thought, I got to stop because I'm getting carried away. And so to me, that's a good sign. So Mrs. Fletcher, it's such an interesting concept. Um, she is the main character, and her son is about to go to college. So the story starts with him leaving, and she's a single parent, and she ha is feeling all the feelings that must be associated with that. And then at the same time, she's midlife, um, not super happy in her personal life or feeling that content. And um, there's a lot of... Mm, sexuality in it, I guess, in a way. So there's this idea that she knows her son is sexually active, um, and she realizes that pretty quickly in like the first couple of pages when his girlfriend comes over to say goodbye to him, and she like leaves to go, I think, run an errand and come back, and she's like, okay, something happened. <laughs> and um, so she's kind of struggling with what she observed in that regard, and then also herself, you know, like what does she want out of intimacy? And so, and then we also get some insight into her son's first uh, like year of college and all of the different, um, you know, this idea that of what relationships are like for him mm -hmm. and his college buddy and and then Mrs. Fletcher, um, Eve, she also takes a community college course um, that's being taught by a transgender person. And so that opens up this whole other realm of um, things to think about and process. And that it's the same thing with the people in her class, some of whom were meant to take a sports, I think, literature class or something, but the class got closed. And so they ended up getting funneled into this transgender or gender in society class. And Excellent. So yeah, there's a Perfect, lot of yeah. layers of you know um, sexuality. And um, yeah, it's great. So almost finished. Seems really topical. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Awesome. And so, Allison, okay. are we ready to jump right into children? Some good kids books? Sure. Yeah. So, speaking of jumping, I have The Giant Jumpery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? um, and this is a book that it was, it was a huge hit at story time. Mm. You never know at story, story time, time if it's going to be a hit or not. But this, this one was an absolute oh. hit at story time. Yay. So, um, can you read it right now? <laughs> I feel like I, I was thinking this last time. <laughs> we have a story time. It's oh. kind of, see, so look at a page. It's decept deceptively simple. It, it doesn't have too much text, and the pictures are just kind of an animal here and there. Mm -hmm. But there's actually a ton going on. The, the pictures, the, the animals have really different expressions on every page, so you can get a lot out of their expressions. And the words, they also have a lot of really good vocabulary words. They don't, you know, uh, you kind of, it makes the kids think about a couple extra words. But basically the premise of this is mm. all these animals are walking through their field and there's a sound coming from a burrow, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it's scaring all the animals. It's so fierce. And I'm not going to tell you what it actually turns out to be or who it actually turns <laughs> out to be. You have to come to story time to find that out. But um, but it's really, it, it's a great book. So I, I recommend The Giant Jumpery. May I? Yes. Thank you. Um, so then another picture book that I really liked is Green Pants by Kenneth Gregal. Mm -hmm. And I awesome. kind of want to meet this kid because doesn't he look really fun? Yeah, and I wore my green pants. Right, see, in honor you're not him. Him. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Jameson, and Jameson only wears green pants. Um, and when he's wearing his green pants, he can do anything. See, like okay. he can do all sorts of stuff. Huge confidence when he's wearing his green pants. Mm. Um, and his mother tries to get him to wear other pants, and he always finds a way to get rid of them. Oh. Like, he throws them out the window, he throws them out the dog, so he refuses to wear anything but his green pants. So then his older cousin and his cousin's fiance come over, and Jameson basically worships these people, and they say, would you like to be in our wedding? And he's like, of course I want to be in your wedding. But then they say, or he finds out, he has to wear black pants oh. in the wedding. And it's just a big crisis. He doesn't know what to do. He really has a lot of anxiety about this because oh. to him, his green pants are everything. Um, so his mother and the fiance end up kind of letting him make the decision. And mm. he goes through a process and makes a decision that works for everybody. Um, but it's oh a my gosh, and you're not giving us the reveal. <laughs> no, the you have I love green you. Pants. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so this is black, fun. green. <laughs> You'll have to read it and find out. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so then we'll move up to middle grade fiction. Um, this is The Great Treehouse War by Lisa Graff, and she's mm -hmm. written a lot of other books, um, Absolutely Almost and A Tangle of Knots that have been pretty well received. And my daughter, Catherine, who's 11, read this and said, Mama, you have to read this book. Aww. It's so good. Um, so eventually I got around to it, and it is pretty good. It's mm -hmm. um, about this girl, Winnie, whose parents are divorced, and they, after they got divorced, they bought houses that had... Um, backyards that backed up on each other mm. and they built a tree and there's a tree right on the line and they built a tree house in that tree that's okay. directly in between the two parents houses and she spends three days a week with her mom three days a week with her dad and one day a week by herself in the tree house because her <laughs> parents are kind of it just got crazy <laughs> and mm. they're obsessed with everything being even exactly even. right so uh, so Winnie th this gets to be too much for her she can't handle it anymore her parents are driving her nuts so she moves into the treehouse by herself permanently and all her friends she's in the fifth grade they all move in with her in kind of a show of solidarity mm. um, and they all they say they're gonna stay there um, until all their parents meet their demands and all her friends have these demands like unlimited screen time and you know <laughs> things like that but Winnie's demand is that she wants both her parents um, to come and talk to her at the same time in the treehouse and work this out because they're, oh. being, they're being really difficult. Um, and none of the parents go for it. None of the parents meet the demands of any of the kids, and they end up living in the treehouse for about two weeks wow. before, <laughs> before that kind of falls apart because they're 11 years old living in a treehouse. That's so. right. great story <laughs> right there. Yes. Oh my, it's reminding me of like from the mixed up files where yes, the kids yes, live in a museum the kids for a couple days. Exactly. Yeah, awesome. So by the end, they all kind of get a little in insight into their own selves and their own families, and it actually works out for every kid. It works out nicely. So this good was a great stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. Um, Did your daughter say what she liked about it? By now? I'm just she curious. She just loved the story. I think she the loved that thing. the kids had so much um, kind of impact on their own lives. Mm. You no, know, the, the kids were able to solve their own problems. Yeah, right. I'm hoping that's what she liked about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the last book I have is The Great Green Heist, um, and green is this guy, um, and. So earlier this summer, a boy came into the library. This is the, the back story. So a boy came into the library with his mom. He was probably fifth, sixth grade. And it was like they were going to the dentist for root canal. I mean, they're both That's the mom so and the boy yeah. just were miserable oh. coming into the library. They're like, we have to find some books for some oh. reading. So I was like, right, I'm on a mission. So, <laughs> so I said, I will help you find a book, but you have to tell me, when I suggest books, you have to say if it appeals to you or if it doesn't appeal to you. Right. And you have to be honest and don't worry about hurting my feelings because we're going to find the right book for you. But that's easier to do if you're honest about what you don't yeah. like. So we went Good through approach. so many books. And he's like, nope, that doesn't appeal. It doesn't want animals. Oh, doesn't that's want this, so doesn't want that. rough. So, right, so we end up with this book. And he actually checked out three books. And I hadn't read this at the time. And I said, um, read it and then come back and tell me what you think of it because I haven't read it. So he came back earlier um, this week with all three books. He'd read them all. He liked them all. So that was huge. The mom was happy. That's she amazing. Really thought it was going to be horrible, but it wasn't horrible. Yeah. Did he have to read um, one, really? Were you hoping one stuck, or did yeah. you need to read I'm not, three? I'm not you know sure what I mean. He, yeah, I'm okay. not sure. Let's but pretend it was one, because yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so he really liked this book, and I... Um, started reading it and I'll say it didn't quite click with me but I am mm. not you know a fifth or sixth grade boy so that's okay um, because I feel like the important, it's a hard age group right the yeah. important thing is that it clicked with him and that we can always find a book so for anyone hot. that's amazing um, just from what I'm thinking about when I was in the children's room you're right like 12 year old boy like realistic fiction right. yeah like it's I hard, yeah. It's, that just seems so really impossible hard. to me so this book is about this boy who um, is kind of really involved in his middle school politics, like who's running for student council and the school newspaper and who's on what sports team and all mm. that. But he also got into some trouble last year, so he's trying to be really good this school year, um, but he can't. Yeah. <laughs> he can't, he can't <laughs> quite keep up with it. So he gets into a little bit of trouble. Um, That's great. Um, while trying to kind of orchestrate some middle school politics. Perfect. Um, oh. So so anyway, the, this book was just to say that like, we can find something for you. So we how really did can. Come you we'll think it. of that? Did it, did it happen to be like on display it was, at the it time? It was on a new fiction or, shelf. Yeah. Um, and it seemed to be he wanted, he wanted a book that was about real people. He didn't want any sort of fantasy. He didn't want any sort of science fiction. Nothing about animals. Mm -hmm. You know, so... 
yeah. it seemed to work for him. Amazing. Yeah. That right well, there may be my favorite moment. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Even though Able, I didn't actually. like this book, I like the story yeah. and the fact that there is a kid out there who liked this book. Absolutely. Enough. Plus, That's they great. came back. That's mm -hmm. the other great thing. Mm -hmm. Like, did you recognize them as library users? Was that the first no, time? it was the first time I'd seen and them. And they came yeah. back and he said how much? Yes. Okay, that's yes. like a huge, <laughs> Kathy's going to be right. eclipse party. That is like the, that's like the best news of the week, actually, that's yeah. Great. Good stuff. That's pretty good. Wow. All right. Well, so something else we should probably talk about is our upcoming Somerville Reads campaign, because we're right in the midst of um, preparing and planning and, crossing all our T's and dotting our I's. Um, the kickoff, just because I'm just thinking of it now, I think it's the 19th of September? I think it's the 18th. 18th, okay. So, and we're going to have a bit, Jeff Chekai is going to come and, and do um, an art program. I think it may be a zine program. Um, we've got these amazing banners that are about to be hung throughout the city that I can't wait for people to see. And then what just happened to you, Allison? <laughs> My goodness. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So... So our Summer <laughs> book is El Depo. Um, it's a memoir, um, and Cece Bell is the author. It's her memoir of growing up deaf. Um, and it's a graphic novel, so it's great for all ages. And she... Um, creates this character in her mind, El Defo, who is her um, superhero. Definitely. And so we at the library are also superheroes mm -hmm. in our red capes. And you'll find us in our capes um, in September and October yeah. as we do a ton of programming around this book at all three branches. Yeah, I know. that We have such great programs lined up. I, what a learning process this has been. And I think um, easily my favorite of all of our, the books we've done oh, so far for our fun. Somerville Reads campaign. Yeah. I love the reach that it has. It really, I feel like, honestly, it's for everybody, even though, you know, the intended audience was younger, um, well, children, probably around 10 ish or so. Right, right. But, but I think really, at age reading, you can, you can think, mm -hmm. what, you know, what would I do if I were in this Absolutely. story? Absolutely. Where would I be in this story? How am I treating other people? What are my hidden powers? I know. It's amazing. We've had such a great time planning everything, too. Wow. All right. Well, I guess that about wraps it up, everybody. So thanks for tuning in, and um, we hope to see you at one of the Somerville libraries and have a great fall. That's when we're going to see you again. So take care. Goodbye. <laughs>